Today on the channel, I'll be continuing the Scorpion cosplay. Today I'm going to be making some armor to go along with all the previous pieces that I've made. If you'd like to build this yourself, there's a link to patterns below. And without me rambling anymore, just go ahead and get right into the video. I start with two of each pattern, which is number one, number two, and number three. They're all cut out of six millimeter EVA foam, and I just use scissors to cut those out. And next, I'm going to take my heat gun and heat and curve these. The curvature I'm basically trying to put into them is going to match up with the curve of the number one pattern, which is what I'm doing here, just trying to get it all lined up. use contact cement to glue all of these together about a quarter inch from the corner on the number two I put a straight line across with my contact cement and that's where I'm going to glue the number one and the number three is just going to overlap and glue on the bottom over the number two and if you haven't used contact cement before how it works is you apply some to each surface to be bonded wait 15 minutes and then after they're all dry you join the pieces together Line up the two and the three like that, there should be an angle, as you'll notice. This will help conform your shoulder a little better, and you can steepen or lessen that angle if you need. I use hot glue to seal all of those seams right there just to make sure they stay nice and rigid. Here I have the number four piece. It's also cut out of six millimeter EVA foam. But you'll notice there's an outward angle cut that is marked. You're going to need that in order for this to line up correctly. Next you're going to need two number fives and four number sixes. And all these are cut out of two millimeter EVA foam. So you're going to use super glue gel to glue all these on. Super glue provides a much stiffer bond at the end, so it's just a chemical reaction. And now that they're all on, what I need to do now is cut the number three in half. I also put a line on the pattern if you want to do this ahead of time. I just thought it would be easier to make sure all my angles were perfect prior to trying to glue them offset. And once I get it offset glued, I use hot glue again to seal up that seam on the back and make sure it's extra sturdy. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and set these off to the side for right now because I had to cut a few of these out from six millimeter EVA foam. And this is the spike pattern. Well, not so much a few, more like 72 of these that I needed to cut because each strip 
has 12 spikes. One suggestion from Patrick Shelnut was to use foam clay, and I did make a few that way. The main problem I had was getting them the same thickness and length, and whenever they dried, I just felt like they were a lot softer than the high density EVA foam, so I ended up going with that. Another idea I had was to mold some of these, was to make one of these and make a mold and then cast them. Options for that would be polyurethane, two-part. I don't think I'd want to use the expanding polyurethane. I'd just want to use the regular two-part rigid polyurethane. However, it would make one of those polyurethane would weigh as much as an entire handful or so of these. So it would make the weight on each one of the pauldrons a lot more, which would then put more stress on my foam curious. So that's why I went with this. Well, with 12 on each one, there's no way I could eyeball this and get it straight. So you may notice uh, some strips with lines on it that are in the patterns. That's actually the smaller one is to measure out this, and the larger one is for these two on each one of these. I went ahead and put marks on so I know, you know, where to start these and where they're supposed to go. And I'm just going to start gluing them all on with super glue. I take a 5mm wide of 2mm thick EVA foam and I put contact cement on it and along this section here on the spikes so that I can put this sort of wrap and definition through it. I don't think it actually looks like that on the actual costume. I'm pretty sure each one is individually wrapped and secured, but I didn't feel like doing this 72 times. It doesn't look too bad and gives it that little extra definition and pop and breakup that these really needed. Took a sharpie and drew some lines along the sides and some X's here on the bottom because there's some details I'm going to need to put on here with a hot glue gun. Mod Podge and a brush to seal this up. I'm using gloss, but it doesn't matter. If it's gloss or matter, it's using gloss for what it is. And all pretty much works the same. After sealing this with Mod Podge, I just went ahead and primed it black. But now I'm going to use some Createx Wicked Gold. And I've taken a bag here and just kind of covered the area around this plate. And I'm going to do this one and then these two. That's I'm going to take some brown that I have thinned out a lot, a whole lot, almost to the point that it's like a wash. I'm just going to gradually build that up so I don't sort of fold 
age than the other one. I'm going to use some red acrylic craft paint to just paint up all the little accents that I did on it. I sealed all the brown areas that I had airbrushed and over my accents with some Mod Podge just because I thinned the paint out so much and it was such a thin layer I knew that it was just going to wear off quicker than usual. But I don't want a high gloss so one thin coat over this didn't make it look too obnoxious but it does make the browns pop a little bit more. Next I'm going to use some Model Masters Gold to add some highlights to these spikes. glue my straps on. I use PolyPro straps which are synthetic so I just use more of the super glue gel. I put them about an inch or so below where my number one glues over and then I glue them to the back part of the pauldron slightly angled out and in between I have these clips that I put on so I can just take these off for storage or whatever. with these buckles it's removable and when I'm actually wearing it should be sitting about there on my actual arms if I either need to extend it a little or pull it in a little I can because I can just adjust that so let's go ahead and try this on and see how it fits The name going up on the board this week is Dylan's Cosplay. He has uh, a YouTube channel that he uploads his cosplay content to and has been long time supportive, commenting on the channel and asking questions and just discussing things back and forth. So it's really cool to be able to add his name in this video. Well, I feel like this turned out pretty good so far. Well, as you notice, I haven't put any straps on the bottom going around my bicep. I'm actually waiting for a gi that I ordered to show up that me and my wife are going to alter. still need to do the gauntlets, but I'm kind of hoping to get a little bit better look at them. Maybe there'll be some more production photos, I don't know. But wait until after the movie's released to get a better look at that, I don't know. There's still a few things, even after that, to do. Aside from like spats and gauntlets, there's a wakizashi, there's the scabbard for that or the seiya there's a few things i still have to do so if you enjoyed this video please leave a like and subscribe if you're not already as always thank you for watching and have a great day